Fallout is coming to Amazon Prime with big names Lisa Joy and Jonathan Nolan as executive producers. I love their work on Westworld, except maybe Season 3. But for fans of the original isometric Fallout RPGs, the first-person titles, and those with no clue of what the IP is, this show rules. I have never watched an adaption this dedicated to being faithful to its source material for a video game. From the looks to the sounds and the feelings, Fallout's first season just nails everything. I will have recaps on our website for all eight episodes at launch, but let's get into this very spoiler light review of why I loved season one. The show begins by showcasing the day-to-day -day life of Vault 33. The McLean family with Patriarch and Vault Overseer Hank, played by Kyle McLaughlin. They're a seemingly perfect family, helping run a perfect society, but this is Fallout, and anyone who knows the IP is aware of the backstory surrounding Vault Tech, Rob Cohen, all the nefarious near do well megacorporations of this alternate history. The show takes place in 2296 around Los Angeles. It has been 219 years since a nuclear apocalypse ravaged the face of the planet. It mainly features the intertwining lives of three main characters. First up is Lucy McLean, played by Ella Purnell. She's a vault dweller, naive of the world above. A true believer in the mission of her vault and its golden rue of do unto others as he would have done unto you. Then we have Maximus, played by Aaron Moulton. He's a low-ranking trainee of the Brotherhood of Steel. Saved by them during attack on his home in his youth, he wants to hurt the people who hurt him, while feeling a bit heroic. Then we have the Ghoul, played by Walton Goggins. We'll learn a lot of uh, Ghoulgin's character throughout the season. At the start, though, we know he's a badass, famous bounty hunter who has seemingly been alive for a very long time. Fallout features a lot of memorable characters, many of whom don't make it in this heavily R-rated show. There's Effin, there's Jeffin, there's Sex, there's Breasts, Butts, Exploding Domes, Crush Bodies, Cannibalism, and it is Fallout. The show does an excellent job of using gore in a mostly comedic way, and occasionally shocking. It never felt torture porny like most horror films can. There's always a dry humor to everything that comes through, during the sex scenes as well. Hearing a character who has never ejaculated or even heard of sex ask, want to make my C-word explode, with sincere earnestness was very funny. Fallout's first season is all about factions, much like the games on which it is based. You have your Vault Dwellers from Vaults 31, 32, and 33, which are connected in a triangular pattern. The Brotherhood of Steel is as cult-like and zealous as ever, with their power armor, flying machines, and fervent belief in the righteousness of their cause. Other factions from the game show up, and when one in particular did, the music sting I had been waiting for finally hit. I got such a large hit of nostalgic goosebumps that it ended up lasting for an hour. And much unlike Halo's first season, Fallout is all in on mining information, looks, sounds, and plots from the source material. This is a living, breathing addition to Bethesda's version of the game, with full respect and adoration for the original isometric RPGs. It's hard to get too into it without spoilers, but at no point did any shot or plot point of this show not feel like Fallout, whether it was a flashback to before the bombs dropped, inside a vault, out in the wasteland, or beyond, the authenticity is off the charts. As well as the moral ambiguity, as none of our main characters stay clean by the end, though Gulgins never really tries to be. Early on, I was curious just where the plot was going. There's a big old MacGuffin that gets mentioned, it's an important item that can control the future of the Wasteland. A lot of times you either never find out exactly what that is, or you're disappointed by the answer, but happily, in Fallout's Season 1, you get a damned satisfying conclusion on what it is by the end. And it's about an 8 episode long season, and while the main plot does take a little bit of time to fully ramp up and make sense, I never got bored while getting there. I watched the entire thing straight through in one long session with my wife, and we both really enjoyed it. She's not a fan of the series, but with a few pointers from me, she kept up with the plot and was all in after initially being skeptical about whether the show was going to be for her or not. The show also really looks expensive as hell. Sneaking in before Jeff Bezos got it set at the TV department for using his penis rocket money, the set design is gorgeous. They also smartly reuse areas in a way that makes sense for the plot, as I can imagine building entire small cities and societies isn't cheap. 
The outdoor locations looked gorgeous though. I was watching on a 720p extremely low bitrate screener copy, so I'm not 100% sure how it's going to hold up in 4K. Ramin Jawadi is in charge of the music and like always, he does a great job. While it doesn't immediately jump into recognizable fallout motifs, it always has that feeling. I'd say it's more reminiscent again of Bethesda's titles than the originals, but it fits the mix of corporate and western settings we're constantly delving between. As the story hits its apex, things ramp up in the sound department where if you put a gun in the middle of the screen, I could have sworn I was playing a path-traced future Fallout 9. My only issue with the season is the very obvious insertion of commercial breaks. I know it's unavoidable with Amazon's new setup, but instead of scenes really flowing all the time and the audio crossfading, it led to very hard cuts to nothing before then starting right back up again for the next scene. Wrapping things up, Fallout Season 1 is coming to Amazon Prime the day after this video goes live, and whether you are new to the series or any level of fan, I think it's well worth giving a shot. A stellar cast is backed up by hilarious and occasionally heartbreaking writing, gorgeous visuals, and stellar music.